on Australia's business channel. This is Media Week. Hello and welcome to the program. Ahead, we're going to be talking to News Limited's editorial boss Campbell Reid about the role of the media in the dramatic change of Premier in Victoria. Details of the first radio rating survey of the year and the industry remembers TV news legend Peter Harvey. But first, there are reports of media manoeuvring as the sector prepares for the long-awaited government media reforms. Southern Cross Media this week responded to reports it's looking at a multi-billion dollar TV merger with Nine Entertainment. It said it's reviewing a number of options ahead of the June expiry of its content affiliation deal with Ten, but hasn't formed a view on a preferred option. A merger with a metropolitan TV station is prohibited under existing law, but Communications Minister Senator Stephen Conroy has foreshadowed removing that rule that prevents a TV broadcaster reaching more than 75% of the population. Well, let's get some detail on all of this with our co-host, James Manning, the editor and publisher of Media Week. James, really interesting. What do you think? Will we see a, a merger between Nine and, and Southern Cross Stereo uh, of their broadcast businesses? What are the chances of that? Well, they definitely seem to be talking about, you know, possibilities uh, of, of linking up with uh, whether it's a full merger or something a little bit short of that. But as you say, nothing can really can happen until there's a, uh, there's a change to the law. Has the uh, government indicated sort of quite uh, to them that it look will definitely happen. We're not sure. Uh, Nine and Southern Cross have definitely haven't confirmed they're in talks about anything. Southern Cross has come out and said, look, we're looking very carefully at our affiliation agreement, uh, but they're not indicating they're, they're going to depart from uh, their deal with uh, Ten, and they're not saying they're really talking to Nine about uh, becoming a new partner. All right. What, with the, the affiliation deal between Nine and Wynn, what, what would Nine want to see from Wynn then to, to, to keep with that? Well, I guess it's, it's basically about the, the revenues, so they'd really want to look at carefully at how much Wynn are paying, but it's also about what the support they're getting at their uh, the Adelaide and Nine and the Adelaide and Perth Nine stations, which Nine doesn't own, but Wynn does. They'd, they'd want to see a bit more commitment about um, lip, you know improving the performance of those stations, because at the moment Nine Nine's very competitive in its national figures, but if it could sort of like fix, if you like, those Adelaide and Perth stations, it would suddenly be a whole new ball game and they'd look a lot better in those sort of ratings comparisons against Seven. Well let's get some more on this and certainly the reaction on the share market. We're joined now by Evan Lucas, market strategist at IG. Evan, I mean we saw Southern Cross shares jump on this speculation even more than the big jump they've already had this year. Yeah, look, it's been a bit of a stellar stock for the last sort of couple of months. They've moved up from about a dollar five back in about November and they hit about a dollar fifty. On this sort of rumour, they've moved up another 13%, so they've jumped about 20 cents, and they're now sitting at about $1.66. They've come off slightly today, but certainly the, the tie-up look and, and the rumour that's come with it has certainly seen investors jumping in. There are obviously still a lot of hurdles that we just discussed with regards to if the deal could actually go ahead. Both sides of the parties have said that they are still looking at other options. There hasn't been any real comment coming out of Southern Cross with regards to the actual possible tie-up with Channel 9. They are obviously re reviewing their strategic direction with Channel 10. Channel 10 for them has been actually a bit of a, a laggard and has obviously probably dragged their sort of regional share behind considering that the pre TV programs 10 are offering aren't exactly in sort of their core sort of area. So there's still a lot of, uh, of hurdles to be coming into, into play. The main one is the fact that currently they're not allowed to do it under the, the government laws. There is that still that 75% rule well and truly in their way and that needs to change before any more talk about a possible tie up comes across with nine. Look, if it did come about, they would create a, a $4 billion sort of vehicle that could be then listed. It's a, probably a very easy way for Channel 9 to get onto the market. They have been in talks about this for a very long time. They've now obviously sorted out their debt issue that they've had with the investors they had in Hong Kong. It's obviously been shifted to America now, and it does give them an easy way in, but there's still a long way to go before that even becomes a reality. Just on 10, shares there rising to uh, another 10% or so in the, the past week on news that another billionaire has joined the share register. Yeah, look, this one's quite an interesting story. There's obviously the, the talk now coming out that over the last sort of three or four months, very, very quietly and almost by stealth, Kerry Stokes has picked up about 5% of 10 or 10. It's making that board very, very, very colourful now. You, you've got obviously the likes of Gina Reinhart sitting on there as well. It does mean that there's obviously slightly conflicting issues with regards to who's running what. Uh, last week, well, the week before, in fact, we saw obviously Chen had their fifth CEO in two and a half years. The issue with him is obviously that he has a very, very good tie with uh, News Corp. Mr. McLennan also on the same day that he was put in as CEO picked up about just under $1 million worth of shares himself. So 
It's a, it's a very interesting sort of strategic direction for 10. It has actually seen investors jump on board. Uh, 10's up about nine or eight cents since he came on board, which is about 30%. They've obviously coming from a low base. Look, 10 still has a lot of direction to be sort of figured out. Their eyes on screen are still low. They're still fighting very, very hard, almost tooth and nail to get that advertisement dollar. They're obviously top heavy now. They really need to sort of get themselves in order and strategically direct themselves to how they're gonna move forward. And just quickly uh, on News Corp, it's sold its stake in uh, the New Zealand subscription TV provider Sky Network Television. Yeah, look, News Corp's been the absolute standout in the media sector. It's again reaching again four and a half, I think it's even almost six year highs. It's really shooting the lights out. They've walked away from that deal in, in New Zealand. They sold their 44% stake. It's obviously more money coming back into the coffers as they sort of look to align themselves more towards that TV revenue. I, my personal take on it is that with the fact that they've got McLennan now at the board of 10, that might be the pickup they have in the, in the southern space. They're obviously also assessing their current sort of media space over in Europe as well. It does look like they are really trying to sort of cut course, get lean and mean and get on with the job. All right, Evan, thank you so much for that.